summer session number five. To kick things off, let's just tune into this present moment by taking some nice calming breaths. You don't have to change your breath too much. Just become aware of where it's at right now. And then try and release any tension around that. Let's settle into a nice comfortable pace and rhythm. We can become aware of the sensations that we're feeling right now in the body. Making sure our posture is nice and stable, balanced, but also soft and malleable, like a lump of soft clay. We can become aware of the feeling of the paper and give a stretch here before we start creating. Thinking about what colors we want to use. Thinking about how we want to start this off. So I tend to like starting with some simple shapes here on the sides that help warm up my wrists and fingers. And this is basically just a nice square with a little triangle to make a flag shape. You can pick any point you want to start on and you can go in whatever direction you want. You can even change up the direction so that you're starting from the top and coming around or starting from the bottom and coming up or going from one side to the other. If you mess up, don't worry. This little row of flags is gonna look a little bit skewed and off in little parts anyway. We can just pretend there's some wind ruffling the flags. There we are. Now, for the main shapes here, the planets in this sort of balloon bunch configuration are just basically composed of circles. So anytime I start coloring in, I'm going to start from the main circle edge and then just kind of fill in the rest. But you can also start by drawing those main circle shapes. Either way, you want to pay attention to those underlying forms, which are nice and simple in this case. I think I want my moon to be yellow. I'm trying to keep in mind the other parts of this, the crafting part I'm going to get to later, and what kind of colors I want there, so I think these planets are going to be mostly reds and oranges to match some of the planets I have on a type of washi tape that I'd like to use near them. And this circle is a good one to get that nice big circle shape in. And since I'm planning to use a darker color for the ring, I'm not too worried about shading that in a little bit. If anything, it'll just impart some of that color underneath and that can kind of cheat the effect that it's passing through a different celestial body.
or passing over rather. I'm keeping this nice and loose. Like I said, just filling in these sort of crescent sides of the circles and going towards a bit of a pie shape. I can come in with some marker or pen over top to make the outer edge a nice thick bold line. But for now, I just want to get a sense of where all this color is going to go. By working this way from those basic shapes, I can keep myself from getting sucked into any little details too early on in the process, which can happen with a lot of designs. Although some details are good to keep in mind if they're going to be overlapping. Like, I want to make sure this purple stands out, so I'm going to slip in there now. Another thing that I've been trying to do is shade a little bit darker as these planets overlap. So any place where they're kind of close together is a good spot to be adding just a little bit more shading. Or you could do dots like you can see in the graphic to the left, which will also give it some fun variation. Most of the color I want to get in. So I'm going to put these strings in now just to get that detail done. When you're doing lines like this, it's always a good idea to sort of look at where you're aiming while you're drawing the line instead of where the pencil actually is. So now I'm just going to go back over all these shapes with some pens to give some bolder lines and maybe a few little detailing lines inside and also fill in some of these little stars around, which I'm going to do in multicolors, but you're more than welcome and free to pick whatever color you want to make your stars today. Sometimes if I go off the line a little bit, I just go back over so that the overall line has the shape that I'm looking for. Another way to get some nice detail and also make a line look a bit nicer is to add in some of these little uh, perpendicular lines sort of coming off like, um, like a bit of a shadow like this. And that gives it a bit of sketchy detail, but it also suggests some light and shadow. Again here, I'm just gonna put a few lines in to suggest that. And of course, some more dots and little stars here and there. And I forgot to do the orange stars, so I'll just get a few dots in there too. I 
I'm leaving out whatever colors from this palette I want to use for the writing prompt that will be coming up next. Just while I have them out and I can see how they look together on this part of the page. I'd love to have the yellow up there, but it doesn't show up very well, so... I'll probably mostly stick with the oranges and blues in the red. I like having little blue stars. Don't know why. It's a less used color than yellow, but I really like doing those. It's almost a reverse of the norm, like one of those uh, polarity reversed photos. So I'll get a couple more stars in. And I'm pretty happy with how this little sketch turned out. So we can move on to the writing part. But before we get into that, we can do another check-in to see where our breathing got to while we were drawing. If maybe we could make it a bit calmer or more full and check in with our posture to make sure we haven't caved in or crunched up too much. Check where the shoulders are right now. And become aware of this present moment again. Just sitting here, breathing. Can give another stretch again before we get going. And loosen up the fingers a little. Do some flicks. And now read over this writing part. So the prompt is, how can you use the hot, sunny weather to motivate your goals and healthy habits? Can you use the extended daylight hours somehow? So I'll start as I usually do by just filling in some words that stick out to me, like hot, sunny, and daylight. And maybe I'll use this purple to pull out goals and healthy habits just a little bit. Maybe not the end. It doesn't make much of a difference, but I'm just pulling these keywords out to get my brain to start thinking about these things. While I let that sink in and simmer in the background, I'm going to do the rest of this in these two blues I have. I'm going to alternate them. It won't be a very striking dis difference, just because the dark blue and slightly lighter blue are pretty close. So even side by side, they're not a huge difference, but I'll know it's there. This also gives me time to think of some of the other words I'm going over, like weather, motivate. I 
This is a much slower process than just jotting down some ideas. But that's kind of the point. I get to practice this font that I don't use very much. And while I'm doing that, I'm making a part of my journal page that's going to fit with the rest of it because of the color palette I'm choosing. And I'm also letting my mind wander over this question a bit more because there are some aspects of it that I have questions underneath the questions for. Like, hot and sunny is usually not a great motivator for me. I tend to want to just stay in when it's too hot out. But, extended daylight. Now there's an idea. And of course, it is nice when it's nice out, so I don't have to think of the hottest, sunniest weather. I can just think of those nice sunny days where things sort of just make you want to take a little step outside and walk around without needing a jacket or anything. But those extended light hours before the sun sets are a great time to get in some after dinner walks. Especially to catch the sunset. I'm gonna keep pulling out light-colored <laughs> words with light-colored pens, just for fun. And since that light extends both ways, I can think about the early morning, when I often like to go to nearby parks and do meditations there. It's much more pleasant to sit outside when it's nice out. And it's a very different kind of meditation. There's much more stimulus happening, so your peripheral awareness has a lot more to hold there than just sort of sitting, paying attention to your breath. And speaking of which, I could do some park picnics instead of just sitting in front of the tube every night. Get outside and eat outside. If I can get my partner out there with me, that'll be even more fun. Have a little picnic date. Which, of course, is only going to be pleasant when it's nice out. Eating outside isn't really that nice in the cold, unless it's poutine. Quebec really did figure that one out. Merci bien. So, there are a couple of things that I do every week. Like go to a monastery for meditation and a community center for some drawing. And I can definitely use this nice weather to bike or walk there, which I have been so far and might still do in the winter, but it's a lot easier to keep doing a habit like that as it gets colder than to start doing a habit like that when it's cold out. So, I can keep walking, but biking especially is something that I mostly can only do now. And speaking of things I can only do now, there are farmers markets that crop up. <laughs> 
when <laughs> it's nice out. And I should take advantage of those while they're around because it will get me eating some more nice fresh produce. And they're a little bit closer than the farm boy or other produce places. And guess the other sort of thing I like doing at this point is to go out dancing. I still do that in the winter time, but it's so nice to be able to just go walking in whatever I plan on dancing in, not have to stash a coat somewhere. So that's a very pleasant thing to do at this point. And I think that's about everything I'm going to come up with now. So. I'm going to take a little bit more time to fill in some of these flags. And while I do that, I can let my mind wander back to this question. Though I think I've covered most of the things I really enjoy doing when it's hot and sunny. looks a bit more cohesive now, especially with the prompt matching all these pen colors. So we can move on to the crafting part. But of course we'll take another mindful minute here to see where the breath is. See if we can make that a little bit fuller, more relaxed. Make sure our posture hasn't caved in again. Look for any tension that we can release from the body and settle into something that's balanced but malleable again. Like a nice lump of clay that's soft but also stable. from that nice stable posture and free breath, we can tune into whatever else is happening right now in this present moment. Give another stretch and start thinking of how we want to lay things out. So I have these spacey sort of papers to match up with my little space balloon collection here and some spacey tapes to match that too. And those are the main things I want to mimic but I also grabbed some stickers that are a little spacey and some tapes that are the same orange and blue. I'll just look at what I want to put by what right now for the bigger pieces first. I usually work from the big papers to the smaller stickers since those are the things that are going to have stuff overlapping on top of them. And I think for today I'm not actually going to have anything perform any specific functions like making doors for some writing to go behind or a pocket like last time. But I may use some tape just to frame my writing prompt as I've done in the past and enjoy doing. Because I find that's a really nice way to bring that part of it into the rest of the piece here. 
so that it's really a multi-art sort of page with some writing, art, and craft all kind of overlapping and in different spots. this to be slightly askew. Maybe this way though. Yeah. That looks better. And I'm going to put some tape down here that matches my cosmic balloon bunch. I have this sort of, it's not quite spacey, more sciencey looking with equations looking like they're written in the background and different instruments, but that goes along with this astronomical cosmic theme today. And finally, I have this tape that has some constellations that line up with astrological signs or represent astrological signs I should say that I'll stick up here I'm trying to get it on the right side so that the constellations stay with their labels, which means it's going right into that crease pretty deep. So I might just poke my scissors in to make sure it's going all the way in there. It isn't creating a fold. And now I can grab some of these other colored tapes just to create a little bit more mirror mirroring mirroring <laughs> with those colors and match this orange to the orange in the Venus planet and this slightly darker orange can match up with Mars I'm just noticing has a little bit of a feminine masculine connotation to it that wasn't intentional but it's not unwelcome either get some of this blue up here. And I think I'm only going to do a two-sided border for my prompt today and just use the stickers to sort of frame it in. So I'll start putting those down I fold back the back end of it so that they're easier to peel when I'm ready to put everything down. I think I want my petit prince here on the moon with his little fox. And I feel like this should go down here somewhere to go with those planets. Maybe some flowers by the fox and the prince as well. And there's this little sticker that has a sort of poem, I guess you would call it. It says, 
A little rain cloud in the skies, a little shower as it passes, a little grief in two sweet eyes. She lost her way along the grasses. A tear or two, but there in sight, is home again, and all is bright. So, I don't know why I felt this fit with the Petit Prince sticker. And I'm going to stick it right here by my lamp, which I grabbed for the daylight hours part of the prompt. The stars right by, by there are kind of a nice side-by-side -side placement. I think there's a curve on this sticker that I can line up with the moon underneath it. Just there. Stick that whole bunch in. I guess so we can see it a bit more. I'll put some of it more with the white. Line that one on top of my planets. I'm just realizing I have some green that I forgot to fill in on my Earth planet here. So I'll just peel back that sticker and get a bit in with marker. also had some of these white markers that I might try dotting my planets with for those dotty parts of the design that I didn't get to earlier. I don't know how well they'll show up, but we'll see. The journal is a great place to do little art experiments. give it a little time to dry because the white develops a little bit. But I don't know if that's going to happen for it today so I'm just going to stick in my piece de resistance here, my moon to go with my planets and mirror the other moons and I'll stick down this moon phase sticker and there we go. I'm happy with that. So thank you so much for watching. If you want details of the music, those are down in the description. You can also find all that music on the playlist lo fis to live bys along with others from previous videos. So I hope to see you next time. Until then.